here with Money Matters in a minute. I'm going to keep it brief, but I'm going to keep it real. Today, let's talk about paying ourselves first. If you work for an employer who offers a 401k with matching, I encourage you to sign up immediately. This means free money for you, and they will match up to a certain percentage. And whatever that percentage is, is what I suggest you give. It's a pre-tax benefit what does that mean for you? It means that money comes out of your paycheck before taxes. So you pay less income tax and you can start saving for your future. Plus you have free money to help boost your savings and your paycheck only goes down by less than a dollar. I don't know about you, but it sounds good to me and any other pre-tax benefits that your employer offers, I suggest you sign up today. This has been Wendy with Money Matters in a minute. See you next week. Greetings, family. It's Doc, and I'm here with another medical moment. For today's topic, we'll call this one, Am I Overreacting? Oh, no, no, it's not what you think. This is not about physically overreacting. But let's talk about allergic reactions in your body. Allergic reactions are quite a frequent occurrence. And in fact, it happens to 30% of U.S. adults and 40% of U.S. children. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is because there are things that you can do either to prevent or to blunt an allergic reaction if it happens to happen to you. Allergic reactions can be anywhere from mild to severe, but first let's talk about some of the things that are common allergens. Some of the most common allergens are foods such as peanuts, eggs, milk, wheat, and other very common foods in our environments. Other things that can cause allergies are things like bee stings, other insect bites, even ants. And another common thing that people are allergic to are medications. One of the most common ones being penicillin, but we don't really use penicillin much anymore. You'll hear of that often though. What exactly is an allergic reaction? 
Well, it's simply your immune system recognizing something as foreign as it often does for infections and other viruses and stuff. And it sends a signal to your cells to stop that foreign substance. However, when you're allergic to something, this becomes what we call a hypersensitivity reaction. In other words, your immune system overreacts and it signals the cells to release something called histamine and that causes the onslaught of symptoms. Mild symptoms would be things like um, sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes, um, maybe even if it's an insect bite, um, a, a localized uh, swelling in the area of the bite. Moderate symptoms would be considered things such as um, more aggressive swelling of the lips and the tongue. Uh, instead of having just a local reaction, you may develop hives all over your body. And then the severe reaction, which is also known as an anaphylactic reaction, is actually life-threatening and a medical emergency. So we'll spend a little bit of time on that. So what can you do if you're one of those people that has allergies? Well, if they're mild and the allergen is common, such as pollen, uh, which is very, very common, you can take things to prevent it, such as long-acting antihistamines like Claritin or Zyrtec. And even the uh, steroid nasal sprays will help blunt those reactions. If you have moderate symptoms, I would encourage you to avoid those allergens. But if you happen to come in contact with one, oral Benadryl, again, antihistamines such as Zyrtec and Claritin can help blunt that response. If it's an insect bite and you tend to have a uh, exaggerated response to that, things like Benadryl cream or cortisone cream are really helpful in minimizing the effects of that. Now let's talk a little bit about the severe reaction, also known as an anaphylactic reaction. You may have heard of children and sometimes adults that have um, allergies to peanuts and eggs and things of the sort. Now the symptoms of this are initially may start out a lot like a mild allergic reaction, um, watery eyes, a little bit of swelling in the mouth and tongue, um, things like that. But these symptoms progress and they progress rapidly. The most concerning is that people will start having such swelling in their mouth and throat that they begin to lose their airway and their ability to breathe. They may also begin to start wheezing and have difficulty breathing. Um, when the histamine is released widely like that, they'll tend to drop their blood pressures. They may get dizzy and even pass out. So this is why this is a medical emergency. And oftentimes, if you have a known anaphylactic reaction, your doctor will prescribe something called an EpiPen. So that if you have contact with your known allergen, you can auto inject yourself to blunt the response. But even if you do that, it's still recommended that you go to the emergency room after that injection so that you can be evaluated and monitored to make sure that it doesn't progress beyond that. If you or someone you know has an allergy and it's something that you can't easily avoid, there's also the opportunity to have at what they call allergy shots where they um, inject you with small amounts of that allergen to blunt the immune response. And in doing so, you tend to not have such a severe reaction to it even if it's milder symptoms, but they're um, affecting your daily activities, such as tree pollens and stuff like that. You get these kids that can't sleep, they're always congested, um, they're not doing well in school because of their symptoms. Well, they can get allergy shots to prevent them from having the symptoms. Um, and that can be done by what's, also, what's known as an allergist, an immunologist specialist. So a couple of takeaways here. If you have allergies, there's things that we can do about it. You don't have to just suffer with the symptoms. So know yourself, know your body, and speak to your doctor about the symptoms that you're having so that you can come up with a plan that works for you. If you have severe allergies or anaphylaxis to a certain agent, uh, peanuts being one of the most common ones, avoid them as best as you can. And if you're, say, like on a flight, you need to let the flight attendants know because even if somebody near you has them, if they touch a surface and you touch that surface, you could have a major reaction. And always, 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 if you've been prescribed an EpiPen, keep it on you at all times. And also, check the expiration date because they do expire. So maybe you haven't had a reaction in a while and you have one just sitting in your car or in your purse. That may be out of date and may not be as effective in the event that you need it. I also encourage you, if you're doing things like outdoor events, to um, have like a little first aid kit, an emergency kit where you have some topical uh, products like Benadryl and cortisone, and even some oral or mouth Benadryl tablets and liquid you can take by mouth, especially if your kids are outside playing uh, and enjoying themselves. If they happen to get an insect bite and start to have a reaction, you can intervene immediately and potentially abort the reaction if you get the medicines in them in time. If you or someone with you is having a severe allergic reaction, the first thing you should do is call 911. This, again, as I said earlier, is a medical emergency and people die from allergic reactions every day. 
Okay, family, this has been a little bit about am I overreacting? Stay tuned next week as I'm going to talk a little bit about some mosquito-borne illnesses that are uh, very common to our area and what we can do to protect ourselves from them. All right, this has been Doc with your Medical Moment. I'll see you next week. Hey, Marvelous Light family and friends. I'm Elder Louise Dobbs, your news reporter for Put a Light on It. I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. This week, we are spotlighting God's blessings. In politics, yes, God's blessings. What a great week for President Biden and the Democrats. Yes, we ought to give God praise for everything because he is in everything. First, the economy. After months of criticism of the president for just about everything from gas prices to inflation to everything. On Friday, they showed us proof that President Biden's economic policies are working. A blockbuster jobs report. In July, job growth soared. U.S. employers added 528,000 employees and the unemployment rate dropped to a 50-year record low of 3.5%. Today, there are more people working in America than before the pandemic began. And if that wasn't enough, gas prices have dropped every single day for seven straight weeks, down from a high of more than $5 a gallon in June. And if that wasn't enough, the Senate Democrats sent two major bills to the president's desk the CHIPS Act, which will boost manufacturing of microchips in the United States, and the PACT Act, expanding health care benefits to veterans exposed to toxic burn pits. If that's not enough, Democrats are working very hard to give the president another big win. As they plan to work over the weekend to get the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 completed. In this bill, investment to fight climate change, extend access to Obamacare, and to affordable prescription drugs. And if that's not enough, CIA drone strike killed Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahari in Afghanistan, one of the terrorist masterminds of 9-11. While the Republicans have done everything in their power to obstruct any and everything the president and the Democrats want to do for we the people, good things can still happen. In other news, this past Tuesday in Arizona, Republicans who are absolutely okay with overturning elections they don't win had a blockbuster night. They are closer to positions of power that could be a real threat to our votes in 2024. We saw democracy on the ballot in five primary states, and some of the results show that Donald Trump and the big lie are still the greatest domestic threat to American democracy. The big lie. Two Republican election deniers won their party's nomination. And the third election denier is Arizona's candidate for governor whose race is too close to call. In Michigan, Republican Congressman Peter Meyer, who voted to impeach Trump, lost to another election denier. These Republican Trump supporters, election deniers, are a clear and present danger to our democracy, and they could ascend to the highest offices in the land. That is what is at stake in the midterm elections just 93 or 94 days away. The big lie persists. We saw on January 6th, the Trump mob, who were American citizens, incited by a lie from the president, attempted to block the legal transfer of power. I cannot stress how important it is for the citizens of the United States to stand against the big lie. Those who still believe President Biden is not the legitimate president of the United States. They're winning races all over the country, 
but we have to take a stand just like the millions of people who showed up at the polls in Arizona to vote against the amendment that was going against women's rights. We must show up at the polls this November to stand against the big lie. We cannot allow those election deniers to finish the job that Trump attempted to do January 6th, tear down the United States democracy. That is the real danger. This has been another segment of Put a Light on It. We continue to shine the light so that you can walk in the truth.
text is reserved for congregants who gather at the homegoing service of a beloved. The words presented are spoken from the spiritual father Paul to his protege and young prognosticator by the name of Timothy. It is a final declaration of a soldier who is summarizing the means and the method by which he lived for the Lord his God. He's reflecting on many days that have gone by since he first encountered the majestic and mighty hand of God on that road to Damascus it was there and then that he received an assignment to pronounce and proclaim the full authority of God, the sacrificial work of Jesus, and the prevailing power of the Holy Spirit. Paul's assignment was given with great specificity. So this is what one writer described as an audible analysis. And he's offering this analysis to young Timothy. And it is by at least four commentators described as one of the most prolific and profound reflections of anyone in the Holy Writ and this synopsis has dual purpose for the note takers. For the note takers, the first purpose is that this is an intentional disclosure of a man who considered his ways and reviewed his steps. Secondly, for the note takers, this, these 16 words are part of a speech of absolute certainty of one's acceptance and adherence to the ways of the creator. Because not everybody who's called by God regularly obeys God. Are you with me, people of God? And so when we understand that Paul's living from Damascus on was deeply intentional and completely obedient. The 16 words, I want you to look at them again. Keep the Bible open, even though it's one short verse. Because those words should be thoroughly 
and schematically reviewed on the canvases of our minds and accepted fully in the core of our heart. It's important because one of the things we note about Paul's uh, practices, he seems to be a man who does not want to return to God after getting an assignment and explain to God why he came up short. Are oh, you hearing me, people of God? And so, uh, this, these 16 words, Deacon Jeff, are part of Paul's eulogy that he's poetically sharing before the Lord's descent to rescue him from a sin-sick world and then translate him to the kingdom of the beloved son. But today, my aim is not to prepare you for your final day of rest. Because I told you, these words are, are, uh, are typically spoken at a home going. So I'm not trying to prepare you for your home going. However, I want you to be able to find rest in the final hours of this day since we don't ever really know when that last day is. So since you came today, I don't want to talk about your home going, but I do want to address what's going to happen when you do go home today. Shortly, there'll be something in this and every gathering of saints. Wherever they gather, there'll be something uh, in each service called the benediction. The benediction, if nobody's ever taught you this, has always had uh, two main functions. Function number one is quite clear. It calls for us to quickly re consider all we've heard and draw conclusion. But benediction also indicates now the responsibility to move forward in the vein of my conclusion. If in the benediction the Spirit of God affirmed in my heart that what he gave me during the worship experience was good. Now I'm supposed to move forward in that same vein. So God has given me instruction today to press each of you toward uh, living each day like it is your last. I want you today to assume Though I cannot tell you to confirm, but just simply assume that the Spirit of God informed you this is your last day. So if that's the assumption, our goal is to do what is requested and required of you to be in good graces with the Lord our God. Not planning for your home going, but planning how to live when you go home. So, so we want to pursue these three goals, and I promise you I'm almost done. To be able to say, I fought a good fight. At the end of my day, I finished my course. At the end of this day, I kept the faith. Now let's go through those very quickly. Notice that, and I thought this was, Brother Bally, I thought this was so deep of Paul to say I fought a good fight. Did you notice that what's not in that statement is the desire to win the fight? Because for Paul, it's not the outcome. It's the input that is important. I'm not saying that you fight not to win. But I believe there's more emphasis must be focused on not how it ends up, 
but how you maintain while you're going through. A few years ago, there was a heavyweight contest that many across the globe were eager to watch. There was a homeboy by the name of Evander Holyfield who was matched with the young and up-and-coming brawler. Come on, somebody. Anybody know his name? Mike Tyson. From the first round, this battle lived up to its marketing. You had two powerhouses brawling not only with skill, but with precision, intention, and dignity. However, somewhere in the midst of the fight, young Mike decided to change the rules of the fight. Instead of punching Evander, he created a new rule that said, bite Evander. Out of frustration, he then fought a bad fight which ended his aim to become the champion of the world. And a lot of us, when we get in the middle of a spiritual fight, we don't even get to the part of whether we won or lost we midway through try to change the rules of engagement. I wish I had a witness in here. We have to understand that Paul's declaration was not necessarily I won or lost, but what I can say to God at the end of it all is I remained disciplined to how I'm supposed to fight. God, I feel like preaching today. Now, some of us are approaching the battle with the devil from a secular position, from a mindset that you can handle him in the same, with the same verbiage or positioning that he came at you. But I believe I got a Bible reader or two in here who will remind you that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, you can win a fleshly argument, but then end up losing the battle that God told you to wage in the first place. Some of us are so committed to being right that we will fight for, for our way to be right and use any method necessary. Do you not know that sometimes the greatest fight is for when you don't say nothing at all? My Bible says sometimes you just got to be still uh, and not only know that God is God, but most importantly, let God fight your battles. I need about three or four witnesses to declare, Lord, the devil's trying to throw me off my game. And what's going to happen is if I come at him in the same vein, I really might win the moment, but I lose the battle. That's why Job had to go street with his wife and tell her back up Kate cause she told him in this fight we in since you are obviously losing everything curse God and die but Job said no 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 that's what we not gonna do cause naked I came in this world and naked I will leave but blessed be the name of the Lord you got to know how to fight with your faith and not with your fear. Fear is not of God. Fear is not of the Holy Spirit. Fear is not helping you understand how God is going to work it out. And I believe I don't care how many are working against you. My, my 
Bible says in Romans the 8th chapter if God is for you come on Bible readers who can be against you you've got to learn that on this day you, you will be you will have spent somewhere in the neighborhood of two hours investing in your faith and so at benediction some of y'all won't be able to exit the parking lot before the devil throws everything he has at you you're gonna walk in the publics with a praise on your lips and, and four minutes in the public adventure the cashier is gonna make you question your two hours of investment you're gonna get home and the baby daddy who's supposed to have a child back at three ain't gonna pop up till 10 30 tonight with some new boo in the passenger seat trying to push every button you have you're going to get a phone call somebody in here from a family member you ain't heard from since Jesus was a little boy begging you for some money and all of your two hours of investment is about to be questioned but the challenge is can you say at the end of this Sunday when the enemy came at me I did what Paul said I put on the whole armor of God I knew I was in for a fight that's why I grabbed the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness the sword of the spirit girded my loins with truth shot in my feet with the preparation of the gospel I didn't come to church just to be cute wear my anniversary shirt and make people believe I'm holy roly I came because I'm tired of losing fights I'm tired of saying God I'm sorry I'm tired of messing up I'm tired of starting all over again I want this day to end not with Netflix not with a good movie or book but I want to be able to kneel at the side of my bed before I lay me down to sleep the Lord my soul to keep I want to tell the Lord I fought a good fight but then secondly he said I finished my course now what's the most important thing about that line is not finished or course my he very definitively acknowledges I didn't pick up somebody else's course. I did not try to do what my husband, my wife, my spouse, my children were supposed to do. I looked at and held on in discipline my course. I don't mean to hurt nobody's feeling, but some of our biggest problem is, is you got your nose in everybody else's business but your own. Isn't it funny how you can leave church and see what everybody did wrong and can't see where your fault is? You ever run those people whose problem is always somebody else? They talk about, I don't have a whole lot of friends. I don't hang with a whole lot of people because people are messy. And the truth of the matter is, you used to have friends and folk, uh, but because you are the hottest mess of the messy crew, uh, don't nobody want to deal with you no more. Mm -hmm. But instead of being honest and getting some help for your mess, uh, you then start pointing the finger at everybody else uh, and saying they are the problem. Stop being a busybody, uh, worrying about what somebody else doing, uh, and finish your course. Well, let me tell you what was on your course in case you don't know. You're supposed to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise is supposed to periodically. Oh, no, that's not right. Every now and then. No, that's not right. His praise ought to continuously be in your mouth. That means every time your behind hit that chair, you ought to have a flashback moment. I say, up, I got to get up and praise him again. Because I forgot 1987. Set back that up. I got to praise him again. I forgot what he did in 2003. Set back to 
God, I gotta praise him again because he woke me up this morning. Gotta praise him again because he started me on my way. Gotta praise him again because I lifted my right hand, it was still working. Tried out my left, it was still working. Shook my leg, it was still working. Closed my eyes and opened up, oh God, it's still working. You ought to right now just turn around if you can because when you turn around, you can say, oh, every time I turn around, he's still blessing me. Some of y'all done been here an hour and a half and your praise is suspect. You giving God a half a lift, a two pat clap, a one, one shift wave. He ought to have everything in you, on you, through you, with you. He ought to have a praise that just won't stop. You ought to already made the person behind you get tired of doing that. Get tired of doing that because you can't sit there. Grandmama said it like this. It's like fire. Shut up in my bowl. Granddaddy said I said I wasn't going to tell nobody but I couldn't keep that thing to myself. It's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. It's an anointing on me. I want to know if there's anybody in the room that said I'm running this race and I ain't tired yet because 99 and a half just won't do. I wish you would high five three people and tell them neighbor stay in your lane run your race stay in your course. As soon as I came in church, I see you keep looking at me because you don't know who I am. Stop looking at me and look to the hills. That's where your help come from. You worried about what brother I walked in here with. Who was that girl I walked in here with? Why did I wear that to church? You better put your eyes on the Lord because this may be your last day. But you can say, I finished my. course. I'm about 70 y'all feeling my spirit who your true gift to the kingdom is enduring. Somebody in here has been through the storm, the trials and tribulation, but when you look back over your life, you say, God, I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm still pressing. I'm still moving. That's why along the journey, Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus whom oppresses in here who will shout to the top of your lungs I've been down songwriter said I've been buked I've been scorned I've been talked about sure as you're born but your mindset is long as I got King Jesus just as long as I got King Jesus tell somebody. I don't need nobody else. Get off your course if you want to. But as for me and my house, we gonna keep serving the Lord because he may not come when I want him, but he always always shows up on time. I got one that I want to tell you about. It's a man that been a sinner all of his life. He was dying. Some believe on the right side of Jesus because the thief on the left side started mocking Jesus. Said, if you are who you say you are, get off of that cross, save yourself and then save us. But the other thief said, Lord, oh, Lord, 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 oh, Lord, when you get to your kingdom, just remember, remember little old me. And that's when Jesus said, we're not waiting for tomorrow. We're not waiting for next week. We're not waiting for the by and by. But today, that's what I came to tell somebody. Get ready, because your faith can up, can move up God's timing. Everybody else had 
to wait for salvation until the third day. But the thief dying beside Jesus heard Jesus saying, Today, you shall be with me in my Father's kingdom. I need y'all to know the third day was for the living. The second day was for those who had already died that he went and got from purgatory. But day one was for one man who Jesus said, you shall be with me in my father's kingdom. I don't know who this is for, but I had, I heard the Lord say, this is today is your breakout day. Today is your breakthrough day. Today is your day of victory. I want to know, is there anybody in here that got the kind of faith that said, God, I'm not going to wait to shout. I'm not going to wait for confirmation. I'm not going to wait for somebody's testimony. I believe today is my day. Today is my miracle. Today is my joy. I am, I am, I, 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 I am believing. Today is my day. Well, if this is your day of victory, let me tell you what I had. The songwriter saying, don't wait till the battle is over. Shout right now. Oh, I was young and I didn't got a little older, but I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken, know the sea, begging bread. He is a wonder-working God. The surgery is already in your favor. The breakthrough is already in your favor. The new house is already in your favor. Jonathan, the new job is already in your favor. Elena, start looking for new furniture because God is already opening doors. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Is there anybody that knows like the Clark sisters said, I'm looking for a miracle. I'm expecting the impossible. I'm seeing the intangible. Cause the sky is the limit to what I can have. Oh, lift up your voice. Lift up your hand. Give the Lord a praise that's worthy of his glory. Somebody shout, the victor shout, somebody shout, the victor shout, somebody shout, the victor shout, I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, this is my getting up morning. This is my miracle day. Bye bye trouble. Bye bye sorrow. Bye bye misery. You're going to sleep good tonight. You're going to be all right tonight. The Lord is a rewarder of those that will 
seek him. Somebody shout it. Somebody wave your hand. Wave your towel. Shout it. Deliberate daily deliverables. This ain't from a home going. This is about when I go home. 